be seated. And welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is George Fisk. I'm the interim pastor here, and we are indeed glad that you are here. If you're a guest worshiping with us this morning, um, and I know, you, I know you are. I'm sorry, we're so small. <laughs> and so I want to say this ahead of time to anyone. Um, in the United Methodist Church, we have an open communion table. What that means is you don't have to be a member here. You don't have to be a member anywhere, simply one seeking a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So we invite you to come and partake. The way in which we do communion here is um, the servers will have uh, two stations. They'll have a, a tray with uh, little cups of grape juice and the bread, and the server will give you a piece of the bread, and then you take one of the cups and um, put it back in the... In, in the uh, oh, that's right, we have two... Where, are there... Okay, we, for, we forgot our trash cans. You'll have the cups and you simply dispose of those in those little trash cans there. I, I learned that the hard way last time because I think I put my cup back when I did it. I, was, I wasn't, wasn't sure. And if you're worshiping with us uh, on Facebook this morning, we're glad you're here too. And um, what else do I need to tell you? The announcements are printed on the back page of the Order of Worship. Uh, we hope that you'll take a moment to look over those. Um, if you would, and remind everyone, especially about the Easter lilies, we don't want the deadline to get past you um, for if you want to have uh, Easter lilies for Easter Sunday. And uh, for all the kiddos, remember that we have an egg hunt on Palm Sunday, next Sunday. Um, so uh, you guys know more about that than I do. So again, welcome, glad you're here. And um, I got to look again. Oh yes, I remember. This is a day the Lord has made. Thank you. 
affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. <clears throat> well, I want to invite you now to share with us the joys and the concerns in your life that we might lift them in a community prayer. Would you share those with us? Uh, Pastor, I have one. My grandmother who lives in Abilene will be moving Monday uh, to, to Sulphur Springs for long-term care. So that's a big transition for my family. Thank well, we'll lift that prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, congratulations, baby number three. Well, we'll offer that prayer of thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes all is well in the family of the church, and that is great. We want to remind you, um, as we lift our prayers this morning, to remember those on the prayer uh, concerns that are listed on the back page of your order of worship. Um, keep those persons also uh, in your prayers as you pray during the week. But let us now pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for this day, for all the opportunities. We pray that we will have open eyes and ears to see opportunities to serve, ways in which we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in our communities. We are so thankful that you have blessed us in so many ways. 
And we also lift those who are sick and afflicted, those who are homebound, uh, those who need our prayers the most. We lift them to you, and you know our prayers before we pray them. Gracious God, we pray for our world, a world that is conflicted. We pray that somehow the message of the Prince of Peace will bring peace to our world. And these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we invite the ushers forward as we receive our morning offering. change lives today for he changed mine completely a new life is mine that's why by the cross I will stay I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary I believe
Can I go ahead and start? Hmm? Can I go ahead and start? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you're still here, but oh. am, am I messing up? No. You should be. <laughs> yeah, mess it. That's me. Hmm? We've made, not only, <laughs> not only am I brand new here and not knowing which way to turn right or left, but we made some changes in the order of worship that, uh, that we're still kind of figuring out ourselves a little bit. I'm not sure I know whose microphone. Is that yours or mine? That, Mine's off. Okay. Oh, I got to take a couple of deep breaths now. Where am I? What day is this? Well, we're in the midst of our sermon series, or actually the conclusion of our ser- sermon series in Genesis. And I want to remind you now when... When, uh, when we read the Hebrew, and if you understand the language, these stories have a, have a different impact on us. So when we translate them into English, we don't translate the names with them. And that's significantly important because for the Hebrews, the name was a window into your soul. The name uh, conveyed with it um, sort of your character and it almost defined like what you were what you were going to do and these names are really significant because um, the name is something you carry with you your whole life right I mean just imagine for a moment that as uh, you were giving birth uh, to your baby boy um, the power went off in the hospital and the doctors had to deliver the, your baby kind of uh, with, by flashlights and candlelight or something, you know, and they did their, but now that's a significant uh, event. So when your baby is born, you named him Power Outage, right? Now, now that's, gonna, that's a name that kid's going to take with him forever. Just imagine, high school graduation, Power Outage, Jones, you know? Imagine at the wedding. Do you take power outage to be your husband? That carries it, but just imagine, while that seems, some of the names do have kind of a comical uh, resonance to them. What if, what if a child was born from an unwanted pregnancy? And so the mother named him unwanted. Imagine carrying that with you. Imagine that walking across the stage at graduation unwanted Jones imagine that wedding do you take unwanted to be your husband just imagine what that would do to to a child's psyche if from the moment that he hears his name he gets the message that he's unwanted unwanted well this morning I want to talk about um, the tribes um, of Israel. Now, we, we get these names, and you can imagine, these, well, let me just read them to you. These are the 12 tribes of the Hebrews when you translate their names. Behold, trouble, heard, joined, praise, judge in favor, wrestled, good fortune, happy, reward, gift, he will add, and son of the right hand. Now, I would imagine that at some point as these stories are told through the oral traditions for a long time, the question must be asked, right? Why, do, why are our tribes named this? Where did those names come from? Well, the answer is, back a long time ago, and you'll remember the story, when Grabby steals Harry's birthright, And then Grabby manages to steal Harry's blessing. Harry becomes furious. So furious that he decides he will kill. He will just absolutely kill Grabby. Well, Snare and Laughter become aware of this. So to protect Grabby, they send him to to Snare's brother, in another place whose name is Whitey. So they send him to Whitey to protect him so his brother won't kill him. So when Grabby gets to Whitey's uh, place, 
he notices that Whitey has got two daughters. Now, one of the daughters has got kind of a lazy eye. Uh, sometime of your Bible might, might, we try to be nice about this, and we call it a happy eye. It, it was not really a happy, it was kind of, it was weary, lazy, kind of cross-eyed a little. And the other sister was shapely and beautiful. Her name was beautiful. So we have two sisters, cross-eye and beautiful, or lazy-eye and beautiful. Well, when Grabby sees these two girls immediately, he absolutely falls in love with beautiful, and you can see why. She was gorgeous. She was the younger daughter, however, so you got to keep that in mind. So, Grabby says to Whitey, I want to marry your daughter. And so, no, actually, it's a, what, what happens to their family? I left that part of the story. Whitey says to, to Grabby, look, your family, uh, I, I don't know. I don't want you to work here just for free. I don't want you to think we're taking advantage of you. What can we pay you? That's what the deal is. What can we, what can we pay you? And so that's when Grabby says, well, I'll tell you what, Whitey, what I'd really like to do is marry beautiful. So he says, well, okay, let's work out a deal. The deal is you work for me for seven years and you can have beautiful as your wife. Well, the scripture tells us that for Grabby, that would seem, those seven years seemed like a few days because he was so in love with her. He just couldn't wait to be with her. And so finally, the seven years is up. And so Whitey throws a big party, a big wedding feast. This is a big deal. And then that night, now this is a real interesting twist of the story. Remember Grabby and Grabby's personality. He's always deceived people. He's a deceiver. What does Whitey do? Well, he sneaks in lazy eye into the tent instead of beautiful. Well, when Grabby goes in, he consummates the marriage. And the next morning, he wakes up when the sun's up and looks over and goes, Wait a minute! You're not beautiful! And he goes to Whitey and he says, Why have you grabbed this from me? You can, either, you can see the, the, the humor in this, can't you? And so he says, this, you have completely pulled the wool over my eyes. We made a deal for beautiful and you gave me lazy eye. And so Whitey says, well, I'll tell you what. You work for me another seven years and I'll go ahead and let you marry beautiful. So they have again. But he said, you have to wait for a week because that was kind of the custom. In order for the marriage to be completed, you had to sleep with your new bride for a, a week. And then after the week's function was over, then he takes beautiful. And beautiful becomes his second wife. Now, we don't really... I, I, think, I think you can play this out in your mind. Grabby loves beautiful. He really had no interest at all in lazy eye. And so he really loves beautiful, but he really doesn't have much affection at all for, for lazy eye, and she feels it. Can you feel that? Her feelings are really, really hurt because she feels completely unloved. Now remember, this is a story that tells us about God and tells us about people, about God's people. Now, when God sees that God's people are not treating one of God's children very well, God intervenes. And what happens in this is beautiful can't get pregnant. Lazy eye, on the other hand, man, she is fertile. And so, we begin the sons of Grabby. And of course you would know that I put my Bible on the wrong page. There we go. And so when the Lord saw that lazy eye was unloved, he opened her womb, but beautiful was barren. So lazy eye conceived and bore a son, and she named him, behold, trouble for she said, because the Lord has looked at my trouble, surely now my husband will love me. She conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I am hated, 
He has given me this son, and she named him Herd. And again she conceived and bore a son and said, Now this time my husband will be joined to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore she named him Joined. She conceived again and... Now wait a minute. A little aside. This is the one who's getting no loving. She's plopping out kids one after another. Somebody's been sneaking into her tent. Well, I guess he didn't have to sneak, but I just always thought that was funny that she's completely the one who gets no affection is getting plenty of affection sometime. This time I will praise the Lord, she says. Therefore she named him Praised. Now, now those are the names that were kind of why they came. Can you see that the names come from from the experience of when the child is born, kind of. Well, Rachel is, or beautiful, is, is uh, really, really uh, frustrated that she's not having any children. And so she really gets on grabby about it. And she's like, you know, what's the deal here? And he's like, hey, it's not me. And so to take matters into her own hands, since her sister, who she's obviously fighting with all the time now, is having one son after another, she needs to get in the game. So what she does is when she was uh, first married um, to uh, Grabby, Whitey also gave her a maid or a servant. Now her servant's name um, is Bashful. And so what, what she does is she sends Bashful in then and says, here, you, you sleep with Grabby um, and be his now would be third wife. And so, of course, Grabby says, okay. Yeah. And then she has a son, and I'll tell you, this is so exciting because um, Beautiful gets to name the child. And so she names this child Judge in Favor because, because she has, feels vindicated that she's, the Lord has heard her and she's been judged in favor. That makes sense somehow in that. And so then, she then, um, Bashful, bears another son. And she says, you know, since I have, um, w with mighty wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister. I have prevailed. So she named him Wrestled. Well, the story goes on then. And for some reason or another now, um, Lazy Eye is not not having any more kids. And so in frustration then, she goes to her maid that Whitey had given her when she got married, and her maid's name is Skinny. So she sends Skinny in and says, hey, Grabby, since I haven't had any kids for a while, how about if you take Skinny as your fourth wife? And of course Jacob says, okay. And so he then goes in, and he has children then with Skinny. And since this is now Cross-Eye who is living her kind of vicariously through her maid, um, she goes on to say then, um, good fortune. So she named him what? Good fortune. And then um, she goes on to say then that uh, Skinny then gets pregnant again and bears a second son. And, 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 and Lazy Eye said, Happy am I, for the women will call me happy. So she named him, everybody? Happy. happy. Well, then the story goes on. Then, and, and Lazy Eye works out a deal. Because what happens is, is that she sees that, that beautiful son, remember, behold trouble, has been out in the woods somewhere and has brought back these plants, mandrakes, that are like believed to have uh, fertility power. They're like a love charm. And so when, when Lazy Eye sees that uh, beautiful son has got these love 
this love potion. She says, I want some of those. Give them to me. Well, Beautiful says, you know, this is rotten. First of all, you, you, you're the one who had all the kids to start with, and you got the firstborn, which is a pretty important thing in their culture, being the firstborn. So, so you know, you, you've already taken uh, behold trouble from me in a way. Um, now, what are you going to do? You're going to take... You're going to take my son's um, love potion as well? Have I, have I put, did, I, did I just get the names crooked right there? This is very confusing. You need a, you need a program uh, to be able to figure this out. So what happens here now? Let me make sure. It's um, beautiful said to, it's beautiful who wants the, no, but remember, she's the one that hasn't had any kids. I'll get this right in a minute. She's the one that hasn't had any of her own kids. So she sees the love potions, and she says, I want those love potions. So the deal they work out is, is um, Lazy Eye has been a while since she's been in the picture. So she says, I'll tell you what I'll do. You give me Grabby for tonight, and I'll give you some of the love potion. So she says, okay. And so she goes in when Jacob comes in, or when... Grabby comes in from the field. She goes, hey, I bought you tonight. Now you have to sleep with me. And he goes, okay. So, so they do. And, and so then God heeded lazy eye. And she conceived and bore Grabby a fifth son. And then lazy eye said, God has given me my hire, my reward. Because I gave my maid to my husband. So she named him Reward. Well, then she goes on and she has another son. And she says, now, my goodness me, she said, um, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Um, now my husband will honor me because I have borne him six sons. So she named him um, a gift this she's this gift from God so he becomes gift now she also has a daughter but in this culture that doesn't really mean a lot but it's interesting because she then has what would be a seventh child and she names that daughter um, vindicate because somehow she feels vindicated she has produced seven children six sons to grabby and her sister who she's always felt envious of because she's so beautiful and has fought with her almost their whole lives has given Grabby no children but now beautiful takes the love potions apparently something works because guess what now beautiful starts having children and so then God remembered beautiful and God heeded her and opened her womb she conceived and bore a son, and God, and she said, God has taken away my reproach. Or God has taken away my reproach, saying, may the Lord add to me another son. So she named him. He will add, because she's hoping that he will be um, kind of a, uh, an omen for things to come. Now, that's uh, 11 of the 12 tribes. Time goes by, and, and then we have this event that happened um, for, for Beautiful. And she does get pregnant again, but during childbirth, she has a hard time. It's a really hard labor. And so her midwife says to her, don't be afraid now you're going to have another son. As her soul was departing, for she died, she named him Son of Sorrow. But the father, Grabby, didn't like that name, so he changed it to Son of the Right Hand. Now those are the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, As this family story plays out, what happens to God's people is, is they really have issues with each other. And this young son will add to, for some reason, is Grabby's favorite.
He plays favorites with him. He gives him everything. He gives him this beautiful coat, you know. We've got that story right. And he thinks that he's supposed to lord it over his brothers. So they plot to kill him. And then they end up selling him in slavery to Egypt. And they end up in Egypt. A famine comes. All the brothers have to go to Egypt to keep from starving to death. That's how they end up with these 12 tribes in Egypt. They flourish there for a while. And then what happens is, is that Grabby gets old and he dies. And when he dies, all these brothers are worried because they have sold Grabby down the river. They know his personality. They know that he probably didn't get this highfalutin place that he's at the right way. He probably connived some way or another to get where he is. At least that's what they think. They're scared now because he's in a place of power. And he knows what they did to him those years before. And so, realizing that their father was dead, Gra or, well, Adtu's brother said, what if Adtu still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for the wrong that we did to him? But when they come to him, Adtu says this, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. We have this long story that gets us around to. What does this tell us about God? What's the message from God? And what we get clearly is we know God's people. The Hebrews are very, very self Revealing about that, you know, they had they didn't hide anything. They didn't soft pedal anything They told it kind of like they was they were a bunch of grabby people, you know from the very beginning They were dirt balls remember and so what's happened in this then is that God's people don't deserve God's compassion and God's love But what does God do? over and over and over the whole story of God's people is that God loves them, promises good things to them, wants good things for them, and God's people go astray. God reaches out to them again and forgives them and makes a new deal with them over and over and over. That's the story. What does it tell us about God? That God desperately wants a relationship with God's people. God desperately loves God's people. And even though God's people don't really deserve it, they're redeemed. And there's this, this uh, infusion of forgiveness that Joseph exhibits to his brothers. Fast forward. God's people have acted like they've always acted. God's made deal after deal after deal. And finally, God comes up with another plan. This plan is, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go down myself. I'll take on flesh and blood. And I will clearly show God's people who God is. And so when we look at Jesus... We have a picture of what God is like. As we celebrate Holy Communion, our constant reminder, our constant reminder, Jesus tells us, whenever you eat, whenever you break bread, whenever you share the cup, remember me. This is the time that we remember clearly who God is. For God gave God's only Son so that we can be in relationship with God. Powerful, powerful message? I hope so. Because that is the essence of all that is real. What God shows us in Jesus Christ is that the very essence of God is self-giving love. When we are giving of ourselves for others, we are most being like God. 
May we find opportunities to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Our hymn is uh, The Way of the Cross. No, it's not. Let Us Break Bread. Let us break bread. I'm, golly, I'm going to get this down before, before I leave you people in a couple of months. You got it. with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn Holy, 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 holy Lord, holy Lord God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ is with us. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now with those assisting in communion, come forward.
surprise. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of life if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. That the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the heights of life, where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross. Next verse. First verse, please. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of life if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. Well, again, if you're a guest this morning, we are delighted that you're here. We hope you'll come back at every opportunity and worship with us. I um, want to remind everyone of the fellowship time in, in, in Wesley Hall uh, following the worship service uh, and then a Sunday school to follow after that. So go get some donuts and coffee, um, if you will. And um, also, if you want to know more about the church, I want to remind everyone that both um, Joe and mine's uh, telephone numbers, you can text us or email us or call us at any time if you have information that you'd like or need to know more about the church or need to get in touch with us for anything. So now would you receive this benediction? May the God who created you and knows you better than you know yourself empower you to, open, to be open to the times this week when opportunities to serve will come your way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore His sacred name. Amen. We'll see you next door for coffee and donuts.